Welcome back to another video, everybody. This is going to be a great one. We have everything from Joe Rogan absolutely shitting on Justin Trudeau to Elon Musk making fun of Justin Trudeau to an expose piece on Marco Mendicino and as well as Pierre Poiliev uh, advocating for Justin Trudeau to shuffle himself out of cabinet. Before we get into it, I want to encourage you to give a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We're on route to 400,000 subscribers. We're up against government suppression. YouTube suppression, Justin Trudeau's own al algorithm, uh, Bill C-11, Bill C-18. There's so many things that we're combating. So it's very, very surprising and impressive that we've even reached 300,000 Canadians, which is like 1% or almost 1% of the Canadian population. And before we get into it, I want to encourage you. I know I'm not wearing my hat. I love wrapping my merch. I love my hat. My wife stole my hat today. She steals my t-shirts, she steals my hoodies, and she steals my hat. So I'm wearing her hat, the purple one. But if you'd like to purchase my hats, you can do so by finding the link down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. My personal favorites, I've said this every single time, is the Freedom Collection. My favorite hat is the one on the left as well as a hoodie. I have the maroon uh, Freedom hoodie right there. My wife steals them all the time. Sweater weather is coming up, so it's great to be prepared with long sleeves, with hoodies, and there's still time to wrap your baseball caps and wear short sleeve t-shirts. The link for that is down in the description below without further ado let's take a look at joe rogan absolutely destroying canada not us canadians not the peaceful citizens of canada but just the politics within canada he actually calls it a banana republic um but the, what disturbs me is the the way he's willing to discredit people that uh disagree with him like the canadian truckers yeah he's saying that they're often misogynistic and racist like like what are you talking about man the fact that they froze the bank accounts of people who donated money that's insane insane yeah. that's that's like banana republic shit yeah that's scary that's yeah, scary I, totalitarian I had, shit i had the spokesperson of the trucker convoy on my show uh, yeah, it's it's unbelievable. It's and, and a test case. For, it really is. Yeah, for totalitarian government tactics, and they did not fail. They they did not pass that test. They and, failed that test. And they did fail that test dramatically. And I know we're a year and a half past the Freedom Convoy, but that's forever going to linger here in Canada and in Canadian history for those that love to stand up for our democracy and love to stand up and advocate for freedoms here in Canada. So from time to time, we do talk about it. I did actually notice that Tamara Leach is doing a, um, a press tour. So she's made appearances on uh, Jordan Peterson and things like that. So definitely worthy of checking those out. And like, it is crazy when you look when you look back and reflect on what actually happened, how the media was telling you that you're wrong or a horrible person, how the government just took everything from everybody with zero remorse and zero repercussions, zero accountability. It's kind of crazy to just like we were going through it. We all went through it together and now we're a year and a half past it. But when you just take today's world and you just reapply today's mind to what happened two, three years ago, it's just absolutely mind blowing. And so that will linger forever, which is why you have constant articles like this still popping up. Is it time to throw Justin Trudeau in the penalty box? Readers discuss a federal cabinet shuffle, the suicide of a bullied school principal, the liberal government's COVID failings and more. Trudeau is not liked at all. This is why media is turning against him. You have the National Post and you also have routers turning against him saying Candace Trudeau sets a uh, sight on fourth election fight with cabinet refresh. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau made massive changes to his cabinet last week in a move political analysts say is more theater than substance. But the liberal leaders <coughs> close advertiser or at um, advisors say it shows determination to seek fourth election victory and when we look at the polls when we look at the numbers when we look at the projections even when you just look at videos of justin trudeau appearing in public you see that there's no way they're going to win there is no way i am very optimistic that the conservative party of canada is going to get a majority government a lot of people say no conservatives will win but they're not going to get majority i'm pretty optimistic that that's going to happen because the only way that it wouldn't happen is if Trudeau called the snap election a year ago. I think that the way that things are going and my analysis is that the more Trudeau speaks, the more time goes on, the more controversies resurface, the more hate is garnered by the Canadian population to Justin Trudeau. 
then the more detrimental it is to his reputation and the liberal cabinet. They could try and reshuffle everything that they want. The main thing is that Trudeau is the head of the liberal party. And that's what people don't want. They want Trudeau out. We don't want to replace Trudeau with somebody else and then say, oh, the liberals are great. No, we want Trudeau out. We want the liberals to have a minority government, which is why there's going to be so much passion, so much passion for the liberal or for the uh, conservative uh, party of Canada to actually get a majority. With a string of recent polls showing the left-leaning liberals trailing their right-of-center conservative rivals after almost eight years in power, Trudeau changed or shifted three-quarters of his cabinet. The cost of living crisis, a sharp rise in interest rates, and a chronic housing shortage have given the opposition conservative leader Pierre Poilievre ammunition to attack Trudeau, accusing him of feeding price increases and... um, Profligate government spending, calling it just inflation. I love it when she, when uh, Pierre does that. Polyev's blows are leaving a mark. The Abacus Data survey published Wednesday showing 38% to 28% lead in public support for conservatives, enough to ensure their victory, their victory were an election held now. Other polls have shown a more narrow difference between the two parties. But again, when you look at the people that are showing up to support the Conservative Party of Canada's rallies, uh, it's just instrumental amount of um, of support and the amount of people that are showing up to just absolutely shit on Trudeau and shit on liberals and heckle them. It's just picking up more and more momentum. And well, somebody like this doesn't help the situation for the liberals. It actually helps expose Trudeau even more. So you got Elon Musk posted <laughs> one of the most popular people on the planet and the richest person on the planet publicly says, I love Canada. And this is the shirt that he chose to wear today. As of this morning, so far as I was recording this video, it has 15.3 million views. And that wasn't enough for Elon. Elon actually went and quote tweeted his own tweet saying, wow, I'm glad so many people (laughs) love Canada too. And this tweet has also blown up and gotten 7.9 million views. So you have Elon Musk, who is a Canadian, who spent a lot of time in Canada, who is a pretty vocal person during the Freedom Convoy to a certain extent. And there's a lot of conspiracies around Liar.com, which redirects you to Justin Trudeau's Wikipedia. There's a lot of conspiracies that that was actually Elon Musk who purchased that domain. I don't know how these came to fruition. There's so many people, so many millionaires or billionaires that you could have picked that that could have done that. So there must have been some sort of paper trail, some sort of breadcrumb trail to lead it back to Elon for people to think that. But that was a big hype once upon a time. And I remember covering a specific video about that. Elon is great. He definitely likes Canada um, with his partnership in America and Tesla's and, you know, uh, his push for electric vehicles and even Starlink. Canada and U.S. get first dibs on a lot of these things. So there's a special relationship with the economic aspect, but also the people. He went to school here. I think he went to Queen's University. And so. I mean, Elon does love Canada and he definitely likes standing up for, you know, anything that's pretty much anti-Trudeau. So again, just to validate your feelings, you are valid to not like Trudeau. You're not crazy. You're not a bad person. Even Elon Musk just rips into Trudeau, which is awesome. Which brings us to this kind of weird story that Canadian companies are switching to a four day work week. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Inflation is skyrocket high and somehow they're cutting back, trying to make it seem like it's a good thing instead of working five days, making money five days a week. Now you're going to be working four days a week. I don't know if this is part of the 15 minute cities thing. I don't know if this is a part of having us hooked on to the IV of the government. I'm not sure. This article popped up in my emails and I just had to share it. Time spent on personal and sick days dropped with no effect on revenue, one firm says. So they're trying to put a positive spin on this. Aisha Khan says she isn't sure she would return to traditional work after shifting to a four-day work week. Her company adopted a new scheme in March, and since then, every Friday, the Milton, Ontario resident 
has the time for something as simple as getting her nails done. Something she says as a mother of two used to take months to plan. How would I go back to that five day life? It'd be very difficult, said Khan, who works in client services for Sensei Labs, a Toronto based software company. So the beginning of the article, no effect on revenue, that's in terms of a company. If you only work four days a week, you're going to get paid for four days a week. It doesn't make sense for a company to still dish out a full salary pay, which is based on a five day work week on average to people that are working four days a week. So they're trying to, I don't know if they're trying to, but it just seems like that the government wants us on their subsidies. They want us on their programs, which is why you see so many income, low income programs being rolled out here in Canada. And where does it end? Now they're trying to take away our work. They're trying to manipulate our lives, trying to tell us how far we can or can't drive. It's getting to a very strange place here in Canada. Don't get me wrong. Only working four days instead of five and having three day weekends sounds fantastic. I don't know anyone that would say, no, I demand that I work more. I mean, it sounds great, but you, again, you only get paid for the work that you actually do. And if you're doing less work, the company may not lose money because they can just rearrange the schedule to have overlapping schedules. Some people work Monday to Thursday. Other people work Thursday to Monday or th whatever, right? So it's a little weird that they're trying to put the spin on this, but I thought I'd share that with you guys and see what you guys think. And of course, we have a massive backlog here with Pearson Airport. Again, you have people that have lost their luggage. They waited over an hour to get their luggage at Pearson Airport, only for the staff to later announce that they won't be getting it that night. And the way this was handled is just devastating. I don't know if I would be able to keep my cool with an employee just acting the way that he does. Bob, I think you better call your boss yep. and tell your boss. I'm not calling him. my boss. You should. Hey, you're not happy? You should. I'm going. All right. Hey, go, go get my luggage. I tell you what the situation is. You're going to go <laughs> grab my luggage and come back. I know what I told you. Go get the luggage. Well, you have people coming. Personally, I would never fly Lynx. That's wild for that employee to just throw his arms up the way he did. That's got like Bernie Sanders vibes. You're gonna go no, grab my luggage and come back. Well, I know what I told you. Sir, it is your job to ensure that you're doing customer service and ensuring that people are getting their stuff. And some of the comments here are pretty funny. Government can't deliver housing or luggage. He did say, personally, I would never fly Lynx, a Canadian, a discount Canadian carrier. Maybe there was a specific issue with them. And I've seen a lot of really horror, really bad horror stories coming out of these Lynx and Flair airlines, like kind of these discounted flights and stuff like that, where there was even a time where uh, I think it was Flair. They almost had uh, five or a dozen different aircrafts uh, taken back because they had to pay their loans and it almost wasn't in time. I, I kind of forget the specifics of that, but these discount flights, ladies and gentlemen, it sucks to say, but they're discounted for a reason because stuff like this happens, which isn't, which doesn't mean that like WestJet and Air Transat and Air Canada are perfect. Like those companies also have their faults, but it just shows a mismanagement. Pearson Airport, Toronto Pearson Airport has been under the radar for so long under the microscope for so long there's always canceled flights the government tries to gaslight you and say oh no the flights are going well everything is is going according to plan and then the cameraman can pan right up to the board of flights and it just shows cancellations and rescheduling it's just horrible and speaking of gaslighters now we're going to look at marco mendicino mendicino's wife held shares in a ukraine war defense contractor uh, says ethics filing. Public safety minister Marco Mendicino's wife held an undisclosed number of shares in North Northrop Grunman Corporation, a leading arms supplier to Ukraine. Must be nice having this type of insider trading knowledge, right? That's what it seems like. It seems like these people have access to knowing what's going to get government contracted and what's going to get pushed out further. And they don't normally do that. Marco Mendicino would be silly to do that himself. But his wife? Well, that's a different story. That's 
totally ethical. Stock in the company jumped 39% following the Russian invasion. Wow, so they made 39% profits off of probably millions of dollars that they got to put into that. Must be nice. Must be nice that they're making all this money. Meanwhile, us, we're being told that we're going to be working less, getting paid less, and the cost of everything just keeps getting more and more. This is Canada. The state of Canada is very, very concerning. Canada's obsession with funding Ukraine's counter-offensive against Russia has taken the turn for the worse. According to Blacklock's reporter, Public Safety Minister Marco Manichillo's wife held shares in Ukraine war defense contractor as, she, as he pledged to be out front in helping Ukraine with military aid. Well, of course you would be. It's making your wife and you more money. Well, the value of their holdings remain undisclosed. They re- represent, uh, represent in extensive stock portfolio for the Mendicino family. The Conflict of Interest Act and related code for MPs require that public office holders disclose spousal investments and income sources. Public Safety Minister subsequently filed with Ethics Commissioner and his wife, Diana Laneta had or held several shares in North Northrop Grenman Corporation, a leading arms supplier in Ukraine. That is absolutely wild. And it just goes to show that it's valid. You're getting validation that these people are warmongers. They're profiteers. They're trying to push an agenda, which you're told is a conspiracy, when you kind of have a hunch or there's like breadcrumb trails to lead into the possibility of, yeah, it just seems like they're benefiting by pushing these types of things that we never get to vote on the the majority of the public don't agree with. And then you have things like this come out. These stories get expose that, Hey, no, they actually profited a lot off of that war. I mean, are you called a conspiracy theory or a conspiracy theorist when you're proven right? Or when you're, it's not yet proven because that seems to be where we are right now. And finally, we're going to finish it off with Pierre Polyev advocating for Justin Trudeau to remove himself from cabinet. The one minister who is responsible for these failures didn't get moved, and that minister is Justin Trudeau. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev tells reporters in Timmins, Ontario, as he reacts to today's cabinet shuffle. Today, by firing or moving most of his cabinet, Justin Trudeau has admitted that after eight years of inflationary spending that has exploded the cost of living, eight years of carbon taxes that drive up your gas, heat, and groceries, eight years of catch and release policies that make our streets dangerous, and eight years of doubling the cost of housing, his government is a failure. It's funny though, the one minister who is responsible for these failures didn't get moved, and that minister is Justin Trudeau. Uh, Today, Justin Trudeau is the one singular person from the Liberal cabinet that needs to be removed the most. But again, I've said this before, I'm happy that Omar Algebra has resigned. I'm happy that Marco Mendicino has resigned. I'm happy that the crazy cat lady, uh, the health minister has resigned. All we need next is Justin Trudeau. And I don't think that he will resign. So he's going to take the massive L on the chin when the Conservative Party of Canada wins a majority and he will then resign. I do not believe that he will remain as leader of the opposition when Pierre Polyev is the next prime minister. I'd love to know what you guys think of this. Any comments or concerns on any of the stories that I have just covered. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to reading the comments when the video is posted. And uh, don't forget to give a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. If you want to support the channel financially, you can do so by checking out the merch shop linked right up there. Or if you want to do something for free, which is also absolutely acceptable and highly encouraged, you can subscribe right there. If you want to continue watching videos like this, you can do so by clicking or tapping right there to watch the next upcoming video. And if you want to watch a little bit of different content, but also Canadian stuff, you can do so by clicking right up there. That's my second channel, House of Canada, also known as the House of Commons Highlights. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.